A Wrinkle in Time is directed by Ava DuVernay and stars Storm Reed. So we have a great director, a great writer, and even Oprah. What happened? <laughs> A Wrinkle in Time is about Meg and her brother Charles Wallace. Accompanied by a schoolmate and three mysterious and powerful beings, they travel across the universe in search of their scientist father. Ava DuVernay is known for writing and directing I Will Follow, Middle of Nowhere, 13th, and directing the movie Selma. With her documentaries of the past, she's done a great job of showing the drama and realistic events, but she's also able to, with movies like Selma, bring realism into a dramatic retelling of an event. I honestly went in with some pretty high expectations, but upon seeing it I realized that maybe she wasn't the best option for a children's fantasy movie. I think we can likely give her credit for a few great things, which I will note, but overall I feel the movie reached higher than it could grasp. Storm Reed as Meg was actually pretty great. Her first feature film was 12 Years a Slave, and she was in a pretty cool movie in 2016 called Slate. She's one of those child stars that seems wiser beyond her years than others, and she brought a lot of personality to a character, and I was surprised by it. It was honestly one of the only satisfying things about the whole movie. Speaking on the casting, I will say that the film made a lot of interesting casting decisions. Some of them paid off, and some of them really did not. Derek McCabe was pretty good as Charles Wallace. I felt he was able to bring the genius of the character to the screen, but the thing he lacked for me was the mystery behind him. Calvin is played by Levi Miller, who I recognized from Better Watch Out, and he actually played Peter Pan in Pan. I thought he brought the intensity from Better Watch Out into this movie rather than the whimsical childlike thing he had in Pan, which was kind of interesting. It made his love interest moments a little bit weird, and honestly, I didn't really like his character. I felt like all three of the W's suffered a lot in the fact that the director definitely focused on how each of them looked rather than what they were saying, and that's kind of the most important part of their character. They do a lot of exposition and it all feels really, really exposition-y. It just kind of made a lot of awkward scenes where Oprah would just monologue, but it wasn't backed up by a really powerful performance. The movie was adapted from a book, and honestly you can kind of tell. Not in a good way either, they just rush you from moment to moment to moment and put some expositional dialogue in between to fill in the gaps. The movie rushed through so many forgettable events that by the end I felt like almost nothing happened when in reality too much happened too fast. If you saw the movie Aragon, it kind of felt similar to me. It's really surprising too because Jennifer Lee worked on the script and I know she also worked on Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, all three of those movies are some of my favorite Disney movies so... What happened here? I kind of walked into this movie at least expecting some pretty good visuals, being that it had a really high Disney budget, but was really disappointed in that too. Felt like they saved all the money for a scene in the end that lasted about a minute and had almost no emotion behind it. The director of photography was Tobias Schleisler, who was known for doing his work on Beauty and the Beast. I'm not sure how much control he had over the massive amounts of bad green screen in this movie, but when they weren't using the green screen, my eyes were blessed with a few touching moments that blocked out the wooden dialogue trying to infiltrate my ears. The music director was Ramin Jawadi, who usually does a really good job. He did the music for Iron Man, one of my favorite soundtracks, and did the music for Pacific Rim, too. I felt like in A Wrinkle in Time, he had no influence. It was just a lot of really weird pop music and a few kind of generic adventure music to fill in the gaps. I will be honest. The whole time I was watching this movie, I was thinking, if I were 8 years old, I'd probably really like this. I don't really know how to explain it. There's a lot of kid humor in this movie, and it all worked for the kids in my theater. It didn't work for me, so if you're a parent and you want to go to a movie that you enjoy too, I don't know about this one. I'll also say that the last half hour of this movie gets pretty intense, so if your kid can't handle intensity equaling like Harry Potter level, I don't know about this one either. Kind of narrows it down to a pretty specific group of kids, but I think if you could bring those kids to this movie, they're going to really love it. A Wrinkle in Time, overall, is a decent distraction for a young kid who can handle some intense moments. For anyone else, all the bad visual effects, bad writing, and bad pacing are going to bleed through the decent casting and almost well-directed film. I give A Wrinkle in Time a 4 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this movie or have anything to say about it, feel free to comment below. And if you want me to review a movie, put it right in those comments too. If you like what you see, subscribe for more. Mm -hmm.